Uh, Josh Kennedy, have you decided whether he'll play any form of footy this weekend? Uh, no. <coughs> Excuse me. He has to um, just sign off last training session, which is tomorrow. <coughs> but all likelihood is that uh, that he'll do that. And he'll play WA? For More than likely, yeah. Yeah, we're still, you know, it's enticing to uh, to bring him in and play him, use him, you know, as a sub or play him and sub him out of out of the game. He he could do that. I've got no doubt he could do that and contribute to the team. But it's not necessarily the best preparation for him to get him through the rest of the season. You're running out of weeks before finals to get him into the team and the, and the, the, the forward line working well with him. Yeah, you only got three. Mm. <laughs> so. Um, is that one of the reasons why you'd like him in, so that you, you can, the players can get used to each other again rather than just being bang, let's do it? Um, yeah, it d does change up the structure a little bit if he comes back in. Um, so there, there's certainly things that we've got to consider, but um, really the first thing we want to do is have him available um, to play, knowing that he'll be able to contribute and play full game time for the remainder of the season whenever he become, whenever he comes into the team. Yeah, no one wants to, no one's wanted to do any of the running with him because um, he's going too hard. John, we surprised Joel Um It's, I think that rule's there. So, um, you know, when a player's potentially injured, there's a rule that says you can't do anything to him. So, uh, with every tribunal match review panel decision, you look at it and you think, which way is it going to go? Um, that was the same. You know, I wasn't sure whether they would do anything or not. They chose to. It's So um, that's the way they went. There's a bit of an uproar afterwards. Do you feel like the AFL is taking, I guess, a bit of the fun out of the game? I'm glad I'm not playing now because it wouldn't be any fun watching from the stands. You know, with... I've always believed that when I played the game, a lot of my bumps were fair. And but um, the way the game is these days, I'd be in strife in that regard. So um, I think the game's in pretty good shape, and everyone's aware that we're protecting the head of players. That's the number one thing, uh, and that's made it a very <coughs> fine line about whether players face um, sanctions from the match review panel with, with any bump now that may look like it was the only option a player had available, but you've got to take responsibility. Did you see at the game, did you notice yourself incident? No, I didn't notice it at all. I've obviously seen it subsequently. Have you asked him or the trainers about what their thoughts were at the time when it, when it happened? Adam? Uh, yeah. No, I haven't, no, no. Well, we can all see the fun in it. You know, his older brother said, pushed him over and says, you did your best to, um, to knock me over and I'm jogging off and you're still on the ground. So, yeah, I understand that. But in the letter of the law, the match review panel got a responsibility to look after injured players. Uh, and that's the way they saw it. John, just on Kennedy, one final time, do you believe he could get back to anywhere near his best at all? Or is it more just about getting him out there to take a good defender and perhaps free up something else? No, no, he's... Um, you know, when, you, when a player comes into the start of a season, you expect they're going to play their best footy. So uh, there's no difference. It's almost like a pre-season in round one then, you see. For... Um, yeah, yeah, he's been training and doing all his work and <clears throat> doing his touch, so he's uh, at no real disadvantage other than being really fresh. The fact that he came off and interrupted pre-season, came straight in and kicked seven goals, is that mean he'll probably only need one waffle hit out? No, that, that, that has nothing to do with it. Unless you can guarantee me he'll just come in and kick seven again if we go down that line. Yeah. Um, uh, we look at what his program is. We ask uh, our conditioning staff to have him fit, ready to play AFL footy full game time. And, uh, and that's where he's at. Andy restructured it. When, when he comes in, does I mean, Cox and that do it? Just don't spend too much time forward. Uh, no, they'll still spend a fair bit of time forward. Their, their form stacks up really well. Yeah, they won't, they won't spend longer off the ground. So you're going to go land Giants down there? Uh, well, we, that's, we had that structure last year. And, um, you know, it works pretty well, the, the balance of the players we've got there. That's your preferred op option then? That to, when, when all the cards come together, that you want as many tools down there as possible? Not necessarily. Why do you think it benefits? You've got, obviously, a lot of clubs don't have as many quality tools as 
you do? Why do you think it works for you when? I think it works well for us because of the, the ability of what Jack Darling offers in terms of speed across the ground. Um, not, he's not just a tall player. Um, Kennedy's not just a tall player. Puts, he's very good at ground level and with his, the pressure he puts on. If they are just tall players, that if they didn't mark it, um, they offered nothing else, then we wouldn't go that way. But they're, um, what they offer in terms of the way they play the game means we've got a pretty good mix. Pretty good, yeah. I mean, it's the, the face is right. Just struggle to get the swelling out, and uh, so he's getting his cheek massaged. I don't know how that looks, but apparently you can do that. Um, he's looking a lot better, and he's feeling really good. He's been running and training from the weekend, uh, and you know, feeling physically really good. Any chance this week? Yeah, definitely a chance this week. Yep. How, how, what does he have to do for the rest of the week to prove himself? really just train and, um, and get the medical staff to sign off on him. Um, so that'll be a consultation thing between Matt, how he's feeling, and the doctors. And uh, Butler and Shepard? Should be okay. Yeah, we're confident they'll both be available. So you can get, <coughs> sorry, you can get your best 22 available into the team now, as much, or are you going to bring these guys back from the Well, yeah, we won't. We'll do it as we always do, which is around availability and best preparation for the team and for them. So um, every week we'll try and get our best team out there, but uh, you know that, that's when they're all available. It's been a hard year of you know, get, trying to get your best bikes out there. You've had injuries left, right, and centre. Do you feel like it's just starting to turn, and at the right time of year you're going to have your players available? <clears throat> I think this this week we've got more available, or well, providing those guys get through, we'll have more players available than we have since early in the season, uh, and that's going to improve again over the next week or two. John, in terms of Chris Scott's <coughs> comments about fans and officials, um, not necessarily about this ground, do you think more needs to be done to protect coaches and officials in the AFL? Um, in what regard? Do you ever feel threatened when you have to walk through the crowd? No, the, <coughs> there's, the security guards do a great job. You know, they're, they're right there with you. They have things uh, roped off as you go up to the box and pretty well protected. So. It uh, doesn't mean that it's um, noise-proof, sound-proof, but, uh, but I feel safe. Does it worry you, the abuse you got? Um, you yeah, you hear it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely you hear it. Yeah. I wouldn't repeat it to my mum. <laughs> <laughs> Unless that's my mum yelling at me <laughs> in the crowd, which she may do if we're behind. What was the most intimidating place you've ever played? Park or Windy Hill or something? Um, uh, you throw a blanket over anywhere bar Subiaco. <coughs> you know, was, everywhere was more intimidating than here, but there was nowhere that was um, that you felt more threatened or, you know, the uh, general banter from opposition supporters is, yeah, certainly around every game I ever played away from home and occasionally at home. Just like the players were saying on Friday night, John, it was upper upper level in relation to the, the pressure cooker atmosphere type situation. Did you notice that as well? No, I didn't notice it. We were a bit soundproof in the coach's box. We sort of get muffled coming through, but didn't notice it too much. Other than, um, you know, probably the crowd's uh, focus on the out of bounds. You know, they looked like they were. It looked like at times they wanted us penalised for some deliberate out of bounds just to keep the consistency going. <laughs> You just asked the game this weekend. Uh, have you seen any changes, or is it too early to new coach and etc.? Yeah, not too much. No, um, you know Port Adelaide still uh, will um, throw up a significant challenge for us this week. No doubt about that. That we've got to really embrace and look forward to. Why are they so much harder? Is it just a case of being home ground? I mean, no, they've got a pretty mature group of players that, and talent within their squad. If you have a look at the names all throughout their lines, um, they've got a lot of talent there.